Okay, we are on to lesson two of chapter 11, which was measurement. And in chapter 11, lesson one, we were talking about capacity. And that is how much liquid can fill up a container. And it's also called volume. So we're going to be solving problems that have to do with capacity. We've been solving problems for a long time. And if you look over here where it says the essential question, why do we measure? We're going to be looking at that today. Okay, so let's go to example one right here. It says Emily used 240 milliliters of lemon juice and 960 milliliters of water to make lemonade. How many milliliters of lemonade will she make? Okay, so let's look at this little picture over here. When you make lemonade, you put lemon juice in it and then you put a bunch of water in it. And they basically wanna know like how much liquid is that all together from here to here. So if this amount, which they said was 240, I'm guessing about right here, was 240 milliliters of lemon juice, and from here to here was 960 milliliters of water, well, basically, we're going to add those two amounts together. Okay, so in order to add 240 and 960, we're going to do this. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to do on my little work over here, 240, I guess it's white, <laughs> and 960. And remember, it's very important when we add things up and down to line up. Let me show you. The ones place has to be right on top of each other. The tens place has to be right on top of each other and the hundreds place has to be right on top of each other. If you don't line things up well, you're gonna have a hard time. Okay, so let me go back to black here. Now, we have zero plus zero is zero. Six plus four, we're looking right here in the tens place. Six plus four is 10. Now remember, we have to split it. So the one goes up here and the zero goes down here. And then we have nine plus two plus one. Well, I know nine plus one is 10, plus two more is 12. Now you can split it and put the one over here in the thousands place. And then you're gonna add one plus nothing. So our answer to how many milliliters of lemonade we made with 960 milliliters of water and 240 milliliters of lemon juice is 1,200, whoops, let me erase that, 9,200 milliliters. Okay, so the unknown is 1,200 milliliters. Emily will make 1,200 milliliters of lemonade. Okay, on to example number two. Just remember, we're just solving problems. The total capacity of eight pitchers is 24 liters. So here, I like, they drew the eight pitchers for you. All of that is 24 liters, okay? So the question is, what is the capacity of each pitcher if each has an equal amount of lemonade. Write an equation with the symbol for the unknown and then solve. So here is our eight. They're telling us that the total is 24 liters. They wanna know how much is in each one. And they said they're all the same, they're all equal. So in order to figure that out, as you can see right here, is we have 24 divided by eight equals our little unknown box. They sometimes give it a letter like X or Y, but they gave us a box. So 24 divided by eight, let's see. I like to think 
about the inverse operation of multiplication, and I say 8 times what equals 24? Well, I know 8 times 3 equals 24. So there are 3, did I say that right? 8 times 3 equals 24. There are 3 liters in each of the pitchers. So the unknown is 3. So if I replaced every single one of these question marks and put a 3, and we added up all of those, we could say 3 plus 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 3, plus three, plus three equals 24, or we can just say 3 times 8 equals 24. Okay, and we know, I already said this, when we think about the inverse operation, which is multiplication right here, like I said when I was trying to solve it up here, our answer is reasonable. It makes sense. Now, if we had gotten an answer like 32 or something really big, like maybe 200, that wouldn't be reasonable, right? Because if we had 200 in here, and 200 in here, and 200 in here, and 200 in here, and all of them, that wouldn't possibly be 24, right? Okay, so it's definitely reasonable. Let's turn the page. Okay, now here we have example three. Dylan is helping his dad wash the car. His dad filled up two buckets with soapy water and two buckets with clean water. So here you can see two buckets with soapy water and two buckets with clean water, okay? It's telling us the capacity of each bucket is nine liters. What is the total capacity of the four buckets? All right, not too tricky. I'm gonna change to red. We know this one is nine, this one is nine, this one is nine, and this one's nine. So we label the capacity of each bucket, and if we go nine plus nine plus nine plus nine, we can do that. If you automatically know four times nine, then we know the answer is 36. So how many liters of water are in all of the buckets? It asks for the total right here, right? There are 36 liters of water in the buckets. All right, we're going to go on to guided practice, and we are going to write an equation with the symbol for the unknown. Remember, a symbol can just be our little box. It could be a question mark. It can be a letter. It could be X. It could be Z. It could be S. Remember, we talked about variables, so any of those will work. Okay, so number one. Find the total capacity of the liquid shown in the containers below. Well, if they want all of it, that's the total. That means we're gonna have to add these two together. So let's look at the first one. I see, let me change the color right here. That is right at the line of 150, okay? Now, if we look right here, I see 150 and 100, and it's right in between. So halfway between 100 and 150 is 125, right? Does that make sense? So now we have to add those two up. So you could maybe do it in your head, but let's just write them up and down. 150 plus 125. I'm going to add those up. Remembering I'm lining up my ones place, lining up the tens, and lining up the hundreds. And luckily for these, there's no regrouping. So we're going to have 5 plus 0 is 5, 5 plus 2 is 7, and 1 plus 1 is 2. So 100 50 milliliters plus 125 milliliters equals 275 milliliters. And it is very important, very important that you include the unit right here. As you move up in grades, you will have teachers that will mark it half off. 
even if you got the 275 part right because you forgot to put that. So we are in a good habit of doing that. Now one thing we are going to go back and think about is they wanted us to write an equation with a symbol. So let's go back and do that because I kind of forgot that part. So we're going to erase this. Whoops. Erase my equal sign. And I'm going to just change the color and we are going to give it the symbol X. Now when you do that, then at the bottom you just go X equals 275 milliliters. I forgot that symbol for the unknown. Okay, on to number two. It says right here, Peyton's tea kettle holds two liters or 200 milliliters of water. They're saying that two liters and 2,000, excuse me, milliliters is the same, okay? So two liters is the same as 2,000 milliliters, okay? Then it says she uses 350 milliliters of water for a cup of tea. So right here, she's saying she uses it. She uses it. So when we use something up in math, that means we're going to take it away from the first number. And they're asking, they're asking how much water is left. When they ask how much something is left, that will also give you a clue that we need to subtract. So they gave us a little bit of extra information here. We don't need to know that the two liters, that's not really important. What we whoops my little stylus is being funny we don't need that information that's extra information we're gonna use these two numbers right here and when it asked how much water is left remember it said that we're going to subtract when we see those keywords so when you subtract we're gonna start with two thousand and we are gonna subtract 350. Now it's super important again that you line up each place. So you can see here we have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, and even the thousands place. Okay, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to switch colors so you can see what we're doing. Okay, now one thing to keep in mind is when we have a lot of zeros on top, that often means we're going to be regrouping or borrowing quite a bit. And we've done this. So if you didn't get this one right, um, just follow along with me, okay? So the ones place is pretty easy. Zero take away zero is zero, okay? Now we're going to move on to the tens place right here. Now don't forget, when the top number is smaller than this number you can't just subtract this top number always has to be bigger in subtraction and when it's not you have to borrow from your neighbor so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go knock 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 over to the hundreds place but guess what they don't have anything pretend you're borrowing sugar they don't have any sugar so you're gonna have to go back to the next or sorry over to the next place which is the thousands place in the thousands place there was two and we're gonna borrow one and when we take one away from two it leaves us with one right now we have to go back over to the hundreds place before we can take it home to our place right here and now we're gonna give that one to the ten okay now Actually, we're going to give that one to the hundreds place, and now it has 10 in the hundreds place. So now, let me change colors again. Now we can borrow from the hundreds place. There's 10 there, and we're going to take one away. It's going to leave nine. Okay, and we're going to take that one that we borrowed, and we're going to bring it back over here and make 10. Okay, so now we can subtract. 10 take away 5 is 5. Now we can keep subtracting. 9 take away 3 in the hundreds place is 6. And don't forget that there's 1 in the thousands place, and 1 take away 0 is 1. So how many milliliters are left in that tea kettle? It started with 2,000. 
she poured one cup of tea, which was 350 milliliters. So let me go back over here. We started with 2,000, comma, and we subtracted 350, and it's going to give us our unknown. I'll call it X. X is pretty popular. Let me move this up a little bit. Um, and now X equals... 1,650 milliliters. Okay, all right, let's turn the page. Okay, here's our independent practice. For numbers three through seven, I want you to work on these on your own. You're gonna pause this video, and when you're done, you'll hit play again, and we'll go through it together. If there's any that you got wrong, just Fix them. Go back through it with me. Fix what you got wrong. Okay, pause your video. All right, so the directions say right here, write an equation with the symbol for the unknown and then solve. Okay, so number three says, find the total capacity of the liquid shown in the containers below. They want the total amount. So once again, we're going to add these two together. Okay, so let's look. Halfway between 40 and 60, we should have 50, plus a full 100 equals, we'll call it Y. So what does Y equal? Hopefully you can just do that in your head. 100 plus 50 is 150. And we're talking about milliliters. Okay. Number four, how much liquid would be left if you poured out 250 milliliters, okay? So how much would be left? So we have to know what we start with before we pour something out, right? So if we look here, um, I'm trying to see, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. It looks, wow, it's not quite 800, is it? If I had to guess, huh, that's a tricky one. Let me see, right here, right? This would be 800. This little knot line right here would be 900, right? And let's just, looks like it's less than halfway between eight and 900. Let's just estimate it's at 850, how's that? Okay, so if we started with 850 milliliters, and then we poured out 250, we're taking it away, right? If we pour it out, I don't have to write milliliters here, so I'll just erase that. How many would be left? I'm just going to put a question mark. We could put a letter, a box, whatever. So 850 minus 250. So I could do that in my head. If you can't do that in your head, I want you just to write it up and down. 800. Lining up, please. Your ones place, tens place, and hundreds place. So I'm going to subtract my ones place. Zero minus zero is zero. You can't do zero minus five. The top number is not bigger, so we're gonna borrow from the eight. It'll become a seven and bring the one back here. Now we have 10 minus five is five. And seven minus two is five. So how many milliliters will be left over if we poured out 250? Our question mark equals 550 milliliters okay and we just kind of had to estimate right here I, I estimated it was about 850 so if you got a slightly different um, problem and you didn't start with 850 that's okay your answer should be somewhere around 550 though if you're 20 off or 25 off it's okay all right, let's go on to number five. If you equally pour this liquid into three containers,
how much liquid would be in each one. Okay, so they're asking us to divide it up into three separate containers. So the first thing we have to do is figure out how much we start with. So when we do division, remember, our big number is always first, okay? Now if I look right here to me, that's not a good line, sorry. Let's see, if you look to me, that's halfway between 20 and 40. So my best estimate would be that that's 30. And if we divided it into three containers, they're asking us how much liquid would be in each container. Hopefully you can do that in your head. We would have 10 mLs or milliliters in each container. Okay, does that make sense? If you're not sure, think about our inverse operation. Three times 10 equals 30. Okay, number six. The capacity of one pitcher is shown. What is the total capacity in liters of two pitchers? Okay, so I'm gonna read this one again because I need to really figure out what they're asking me, okay? It says the capacity of one pitcher is shown. What is the total capacity in liters of two pitchers? So what I think they're saying is this is one pitcher, okay? This whole thing is one pitcher. So if they want to know in liters, how much would two pitchers be? So if this is one liter, and this is one liter, and this is one liter, how many liters is one pitcher? Okay, well, one pitcher is three liters, right? But they said they wanted two pitchers. So what you have to kind of imagine is, let's see if I can draw a pitcher of some kind. It's got some kind of handle. It's not very good, I know. Okay, so if we needed to fill up this pitcher and fill up the capacity, Right here, we would take and pour this one in here. There's one liter. Pour this one in is two liters. Pour this one in is three liters. That's where I got the three liters. Do you see the one L here? The one L and the one L. So all together, three liters. But they said we needed to fill up two of these pitchers. So we basically have to multiply that by two. And they ask, what is the total capacity in liters of two pitchers? You can kind of ignore this L, okay? Three times two equals X. I forgot to do that over here. X, well, what is three times two? Three times two is six, isn't it? And how many, they asked how many liters? So our unit is liters, L, just for liters, okay? Kind of a two-step problem there. All right, number seven. One small carton of milk is 250 milliliters. You see that right here? 250 milliliters, each one, okay? One large carton of milk is 1,000 milliliters uh, or one liter, okay? Circle the correct number of small containers equal to 1,000 milliliters or one liter. They want to know how many of these to fill this up. How many 250s will equal 1,000? Okay, so let's just do it this way. Two of them, see what that equals. We're going to add, see how I lined everything up? 5 plus 5 is 10, carry the 1, and we have 4. Five. Okay, so two of them, here's one of them, here's two of them, equals 500 milliliters, right? Okay, so if two of them equals 500, let's think, I need a thousand. So how many would equal a thousand? 
Hmm. If you still don't know, we can keep going on. We can add another 250. Whoops. We can add another 250. Here's another one. We can add those up. That's 750. That's not enough. We need 1,000. Let's add another 250. Lining everything up neatly. 0 plus 0 is 0. 5 plus 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 7 plus 1 plus 2 is a 10. And look what we got. We got a 1,000. So we added another one here. So how many of these small milk cartons equals a large milk carton right here? It's four of them. Okay, so what they want us to do is write 250 plus 250 plus 250 plus 250 equals 1,000 milliliters. You could have also said four times 250 equals, let's see a comma, milliliters. Okay? So if you couldn't figure that one out in your head, that's okay. We just kept adding 250, like we saw here in each one, until we got to 1,000. All right, let's turn the page. Okay, so here we are, same thing. I want you to do the problems. When you're done, push play and go through them with me, okay? All right, so number eight. Carlos's aquarium holds 81 liters of water. His pail holds nine liters of water. How many pails of water does it take to fill the aquarium? All right, so if it doesn't come to you which operation you should use, that's okay. Sometimes we have to think it through a little bit more, but let's draw it out. Here's his aquarium. He's going to fill it up for all his little fishies, right? So, he has a pail. Give a little handle. It holds nine. His aquarium holds 81 liters. They want to know how many pails or how many times does he have to fill up that pail before he can get 81 liters into that aquarium. So, if you're not sure which operation to use, let's think about it. If he puts nine in, okay, that's nine. He puts in another one, that's nine more, that's 18. He puts in another one, that's nine more, that's 27. So, so far, he's put in one, two, three pails, right? If he puts in another one, that's four, and that's 36 milliliters. He still needs more water. He wants to fill up that aquarium. He puts in another one, that's five. That's 45 milliliters. You see what we're doing? We're adding nine to the aquarium each time. So how many nines does it take to fill up till we get to 81? Well, Nine times nine equals 81. Now, if we were to write this as an equation, which we probably should have done, it doesn't say, but I'm guessing that's what they meant us to do, we would start with 81, right? We would divide it by nine, and that would give us our unknown. Okay, and then our unknown equals Here we are. Unknown equals, equals nine, nine pails of water. Sorry, it got kind of messy in there. Okay, let's go on to number nine. There are 600 milliliters of water in Lisa's vase. If she pours out 250 milliliters of water, how much water will be left in the vase? Okay, so let's think about what our keywords are here, okay? Keywords are she pours something out. And then they ask how much will be left, like left over. 
That is our keyword for subtraction, okay? So what we're doing is we're starting with 600. She's pouring out 254. And they want to know how many milliliters of water uh, will be left. So I'll use W as our unknown, as our variable. So now we have to come over here and we have to subtract. This would be a little tricky to do in your head. So let's write it out, lining up our ones place, tens place, and hundreds place. Now, when you have lots of zeros on top, you're gonna do a lot of borrowing. So we have to start in the ones place. You can't take four away from nothing. So we have to go next door and borrow. They don't have any either. So you have to go again and borrow. We borrow one. It leaves five. We bring the one over here, it leaves 10. But we still need one in the ones place. So you borrow from the 10 and now you have nine. And now we have 10 here. So now you just straight up and down subtract, okay? 10 minus four is six. Nine minus five is four. And five minus two is three. So how much water will be left in the vase? Well. W is going to equal 346, and our unit was milliliters, ML, milliliters. Okay, all right, number 10. Tara has three coolers with seven liters of lemonade in each. How many liters of lemonade does she have in all? In all can often mean we add or we can also multiply. So let's think about this. Um, let me get my pen. Okay, we're going to draw a couple coolers, okay? So think of like an ice chest, okay? So she has three coolers, okay? There are, I'll make it yellow, seven liters of lemonade in each one. So imagine a liter bottle. Three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not very cute bottles, but that's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a couple ways we can do that. We can say seven, let's change that. Seven plus seven plus seven equals X. Or we can just do three times seven equals X. Okay, so what is our x going to equal? Our x is going to equal, well, 3 times 7 is 21. L for liters. Okay, there are 21 liters of lemonade in all. Okay, on to number 11. Use mental math. Sean's mother bought two bottles of shampoo. Each bottle contains 800 milliliters of shampoo. How many milliliters of shampoo did Sean's mother buy? Well, I can see right here. Here's Sean, and he's washing his hair with one bottle. Each bottle was 800 milliliters. But his mom said he bought two. So, the easiest way to do that would be 800 times two. Well, I know two times eight is 16, and we can just put those extra twos, sorry, those extra two zeros that are here, we just tack them onto the end right there, and that gives us 1,600 milliliters. I think we're supposed to do equals S and S equals with our unknown, but that's okay. 1,600 milliliters. You might also hear some people say 1,600, and that's okay too. You can say 1,600, or you can say 1,600 milliliters. Okay, that one you probably could have done in your head because 800 times two, if you know eight times two is 16, you just tap on the two zeros is 1,600 or 1,600. Okay, number 12. Plan your solution. A cooking pot holds 1,000 milliliters of sauce. Then half of the sauce is used. 
another 300 milliliters of sauce is added back in. Once again, half of the pot of sauce is used. How many milliliters of sauce is needed in order to fill the pot again? All right, so this is just a multi-step problem, okay? I really think it's smart to draw a picture. So I'm gonna draw a picture. Here's the pot of sauce, okay? Little handles on the side. All right, so it says it holds a thousand. I'm just gonna put a thousand over here, okay? Then half of the sauce is used. Well, half of a thousand is 500, okay? Then they added 300. Well, 500 plus 300 is now 800. I'm gonna say it's about right here, okay? So we started with the thousand. We used half of it, it brought us down to 500. Then we added 300 to give us, now we have 800. Then another step. Once again, half of the pot of sauce is used. Well, now we're at 800. What's half of 800? Half of 800 is 400. So how many milliliters of sauce is needed in order to fill the pot again? Okay, so now we're at 400, and they want us to fill it up to 1,000. Well, 400 up to 1,000. We could go ahead and subtract if we wanted to, or we could count up. I would prefer to count up if I couldn't do this in my head. I would say, well, 400, count up to 500, 600, 700, 800, 900, then 1,000. I counted up 600 six times, so 600, okay? So the answer to the whole thing would be 600 milliliters. I don't think they're asking us to write an equation, so I'm gonna just write 600 milliliters right there. If they did, it would be something like 1,000 <laughs> divided by two, and then it would be plus 300 divided by two. We have to put parentheses. I don't know. And then, I don't know, that's a long step, but we did it. So writing as an equation would be a really long equation. Okay, number 13, our last one, yay. Explain how you might decide whether to measure capacity in milliliters or liters. Well, let me remind you, milliliters are tiny. Remember those little drops that we saw from the little eyedropper? I'm not drawing that very well, right? Little eyedropper, it was 10 little drops is one milliliter. And a liter, think of like, a bottle of soda. That is a horrible bottle of soda. Let's do that again. They're skinny on top and they get bigger. There we go. Okay, those really big ones are two liters. Okay, and then they have slightly skinnier ones that are one liter. Okay, so we're talking about a huge difference in the amount. Okay, um, so if you had to decide which way to measure, you would have to think about what are you talking about? Are you talking about a really large amount of liquid, like a bathtub? Well, if we're talking about a bathtub, we would use liters. But if we were talking about like maybe a medicine cup, you would probably use milliliters. So how you decide whether to measure in milliliters or liters depends on what you're measuring. If you're measuring something really big, you're gonna use a larger unit. If you're gonna measure something small, maybe it's nail polish, or maybe it's medicine in a little cup, that would be in milliliters. So anything pretty much smaller than a one liter bottle, you would probably use milliliters. 
anything bigger than this, you would probably use liters. All right, do your homework and um, we'll go over questions when I see you.